Today, guys, is something that I have promised for I don't even know how long. Today, I am going to be ranking all of the main and most important bosses and most powerful bosses and the most noteworthy bosses, not side bosses in Elden Ring. And I'm going to say which ones are the best, which ones are second best, you know, S tier, A tier, B tier, all, all that shit. I mean, why am I explaining this? You guys know how a fucking tier list works, right? Okay, let's get started. Renala, Queen of the Full Moon. I think Renala is... <sighs> Renala, okay. The fight is... I would say it's a B-tier fight, because isn't she just, like, immune to magic? Isn't Renala just, like, straight up immune to magic? Like, she just, like, doesn't take magic damage, etc.? Yeah, uh, no, yes, kinda. First phase is, uh, is cool. Yes, no, resistant, very resistant. Yeah, it's like, I feel like that kind of sucks. Like, if for a magic user, so I wouldn't say she's an S-tier fight. I think thematically, Renala is an S-tier fight. But all things considered, in the scope of Elden Ring, I think Renala is a solid high B-tier, low A-tier fight. Uh, it's not a particularly challenging fight. Uh, as soon as I figured out the, like, one or two gimmicks that it had, there was really nothing else to worry about. Uh, she can get easily staggered by almost any attack in the game. You can keep her stun lock pretty much the whole time. So, it's not a hard fight, but it's definitely a, uh, it's a good fight, and it's thematic, and it's cinematic, right? That's what it is. Best boss arena? Yeah, she's a summoner, sure. I spent nine hours fighting her because I was a mage, and that's also another reason why I think she's not an S tier or an A tier fight, is because I think it sucks for like a class, it's like if you build your character in a certain way, and then there's a boss that basically just completely fucking stonewalls you because you don't have, uh, you're not building in another way, I think that kind of sucks. So I'm gonna go and put Renala in a B tier. Mages deserve it, that's true. Uh, Godric the Grafted. Now, we all know about Godric. In my opinion, I think Godric is one of the coolest bosses in the game. Now, I'll also say Godric is not one of the hardest bosses in the game. Uh, Trimballs with the five gifted community subs, I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Godric is, in my opinion, either an A tier boss, a very high A tier, or an S tier boss. The reason why I rank Godric so highly is because of how cool he is. He's a very cool boss. But in my opinion, I think Godric should have been before Margit. I, I think I think Godric is actually an easier boss than Margit, and he would be a better beginning boss than Margit is. That's my opinion. So anyway, uh, I do think Godric is a great boss. I like him a lot. So let's look at the next one. Commander Niall. Now this is the guy that's in like the, uh, the frozen area, and he summons the two guys next to him, and he does a lot of crazy fucking attacks. Um, overall... I generally dislike fights that have multiple enemies. I'm trying to decide how I really feel about him and if it's a good fight or not. I think there's a lot of people that probably had a really bad experience with this fight because they didn't play it the way I did. I think Niall is going to be... I kind of agree with you guys. I think it's about a C tier fight. I do. I don't think it's really that great. It's just an okay looking fight. It's not that amazing. It's just, all right, great. You've got this boss and that's it. And uh, there's multiple boss fight you like. Um, I think Ornstein and Smo is really good in Dark Souls 1, and there's probably other ones that I just can't think of right now. But yeah, sure, I think there are some that are okay. It's a cheap fight. The difficulty comes from having you fight 3v1. No, it doesn't, because if you know anything about the fight, you'd know that the adds despawn halfway through the fight, and the real challenge of the fight has to do with whenever he absorbs them, and he has, like, the lightning empowerment on his weapon. That's the only part that's hard. Demon Princes? I hated the Demon Princes. I, they were so annoying. Okay, next fight. So, this is Loretta, Knight of the Hail Tree. Now, for anybody who doesn't know, um, this is the Tree Sentinel, but it has a sword that's magic and it shoots arrows at you. In my opinion, I think this is a D or an E tier fight. Like, this is a D or E tier fight. Here's the reason. It is a copy-paste. It does the same attacks that the, uh, fucking, uh, that the Tree Sentinel does. It does all of the same stuff except for a handful of magic attacks that, at that point in the game, don't really alter the gameplay that much. The only attack that it does that's, like, really annoying to deal with are the swords that are around the top of its head. All of the other mechanics are very easy to deal with, and there's no real challenge whatsoever. So, I would say that besides it being a very easy fight, and also it being a, uh, you know, like a, 
a, a kind of a copy paste of like one of the first bosses you encounter. And at this point, after you fought Loretta, you've already gone up against the odds are you've already fought against the tree sentinel. You fought against the double tree sentinels on the way up to the capital. And you probably also fought against the demonic tree sentinel that does like the, uh, the lightning shield or whatever. So I think Loretta is just an E tier fight without really a lot of uh, a lot of high quality stuff. Like it's just it, yeah the draconic yeah draconic tree sentinel. Now this is a boss. This might surprise you guys. The Red Wolf of Radagon. I think this is one of the coolest bosses in the game. I really like this boss a lot. The reason why I like it so much is because of the fact that it does. A lot of damage it's extremely aggressive it's very hard but it also doesn't have a lot of health i think it's a it's it was reused a lot but like are we going to use something that was like like the reason why it's different than loretta in my opinion is that the first time that you encounter this type of npc is the red wolf of radagon you probably will not encounter another one before this so i'm going to put the red wolf as a b tier fight I actually like it a lot, and I think that it's relatively well designed. I do. I, I think it's relatively well designed. You can see remnants of, like, um, uh, Sif in the fight, too, with some of its mechanics. And as a Dark Souls fan, uh, that, I appreciate that a lot. Yeah, it's very early on. Exactly. Have I finished Elden Ring? Yes, I have. The Godskin Apostle. Now, this is, um, uh, this is the skinny one. The Godskin Apostle, in my opinion, is a joke fight. But it is, a, it is a really, really cool fight. And I would say the Godskin Apostle, just by itself, is probably like a... I'd say it's about right here. I'd say it's a B-tier fight. And do you guys think it's an A-tier? Wait, why do you guys think it's an A-tier fight? Yeah, why? Why, why is it an A-tier fight? The music? Um, He's far as fuck, appropriately leveled. Um... I mean, is he really? Like, all of his attacks are, like, super telegraphed. He doesn't do anything that's hard. He has, like, three openings that you can hit him with, like, a charged R2. Like, this boss is not hard at all. Boss is a joke. What, what, what do you mean? Like, Wolf's harder than Renala? Yeah, I would say it is. And, uh, unique attacks? I mean, like, you could say it's unique attacks, but you can, like, you can make the same argument with, like, Godskin Apostle that you can with the Red Wolf of Radagon, where you encounter the Godskin Apostle, I think, three or four times in the entire game. So, yeah, I just... Massively OP and don't listen to the music. Rest of us, he's balanced fight with good music. Really? He's not hard, but the cool factor is there. This would make you put him in S tier. The anti-Estus Fireball is cool. I actually don't like those. I, I hate those mechanics. They really annoy the shit out of me. Um, yeah, let, let's... I, I think we're gonna go... I, I, I think he's a B tier fight, in my opinion. And the only reason I'm putting him here... Here's another context uh, context thing. Is that a lot of these fights here... I think that they're very good fights. But I'm putting them in the context of the entire game. Like, in the context of the entire game... I don't think that if you have S tier fights and A tier fights... I think the Godskin Apostle is much below that. Does that make sense? Like, it's a good fight. It definitely, it's a great fight. But in the in the scale of Elden Ring, I think it's a B. That's where I'm at. So let's look at the next one. Elmer of the Briar. Now, I went over and I killed this guy after I ended the stream. Uh, this is a really, really fucking cool boss. I love this boss. This is actually, in my opinion, an A or an S tier fight. Like, I would put it right here. Like, it, I don't think it's really better than Godric, but it's certainly more interesting. So basically, the guy has, um, it's like in in, uh, in Lost Ark, it's like the, uh, what do you call it, the Velcruz, how, like, the guy had the sword, or the girl had the sword, like, fighting for her, and he wasn't actually swinging it. And, like, this guy, if you get far enough away from him, he'll have the sword attack you in the air, right, with, like, magic. But if you get closer, he'll actually wield it himself. It's really, really cool. So I would say this is an A tier fight. Absolutely. It's Denathrius. Yes, it's perfect. Exactly. Now, the next boss. Rikard, Lord of Blasphemy. Rikard, in my opinion, is one of the coolest fights in the game. I fucking love this fight, and I think this is just... Again, guys, this is why I said there are S-tier fights. I think that Rikard is an actual boss fight in Elden Ring that very easily, very obviously, deserves an S-tier ranking. You know it. I know it. Everybody fucking knows it. It is an amazing fight. I love it. The cinematics are great. The uh, it's it's effectively a Yorm fight, 
that actually works really well. You know what I mean? A, a tier because gimmick weapon makes it face roll. But it doesn't, though. Like, making a fight... The thing is that there are a lot of fights that are not super hard, but they're good. And there are some fights that are super hard, but they're not good. Like, it's like, yes, obviously it's kind of a an easy boss whenever you have the pole arm, but it's really not. Like, you still have to do certain mechanics, and by the time that you get over there, he probably does a lot of damage. Yeah, it depends on whenever you fight him. Yeah, I didn't fight him that late in the game, so it wasn't really, like, super easy for me. Next boss, Fire Giant. Aesthetically, the Fire Giant is an S. Thematically, the Fire Giant is an S. But in my opinion, what's so crazy to me is some people are saying it's an S-tier fight. Other people are saying it's a D-tier fight. And that's why I think it's a B-tier fight. Because the, uh, the Fire Giant is so easily... It is such a cool fight of spectacle, but a melee player will only look at his feet the whole time. So, like, what I'm saying is that the fight has a cool theory behind it. It's kind of like Spine of Deathwing, for example. Like, whenever you do Spine of Deathwing, it's a really, really cool fight. It's an awesome fucking idea of a fight, but the actual, in practice, it doesn't work that well. Because the, the boss is too big, and you're not able to, like, really appreciate the scope of the boss, and the most effective way to fight the Fire Giant is to play it in a way that doesn't take advantage of the thematic aspect of the boss. Yeah, I saw nothing, exactly. So that's why I think it's a B-tier fight. Uh, I think it's a great fight in a lot of ways. However, I think that a lot the way that it's designed makes it a little bit uh, a little bit hard to enjoy for a melee player. Uh, that's it. So let's look at Valiant Gargoyles. Now this is um, so basically the Valiant Gargoyles. Uh, this fight is like so basically there's a gargoyle and then there's another one right at the same time. I feel like this is just a C tier fight. I agree with you guys. I think that it is a C tier fight. It's not that great. It's not as good as Commander Nile, but it's it's okay, I guess. Yeah, it's okay. Bell Gargoyles 2.0. Yes, it, it's it's difficult though. It is uh, unless you're McConnell and you just use magic to cheese the whole thing. Of course. Uh, let me close some of these. We're gonna go to the next one. Now the Mimic tier. I think that this is a really really cool boss fight. It's a super cool boss fight. However, it's like super easy. Like, did anybody here actually struggle with this fight? Because I remember whenever I did it, it didn't even hit me. I'm going to make this a D-tier fight because of just how anticlimactic and boring it is, while at the same time, it's also just, uh, I don't know. I just, I just, I think it's just, yeah, it's just, it, like, it, it's a cool idea, but it's just too fucking easy. That's basically where I'm at. Yeah, it's a cool idea, but it's basically too easy. Next one. We've got the Fat Boy, the Godskin Noble. Now, I kind of like this fight. To be honest, I really do. And I personally think that it's a cooler and a better fight than the Godskin Apostle. I feel like the Godskin Noble is better, and it's somewhere around a B tier fight. And it could even be above, like, I would say maybe it's even above uh, the Fire Giant. Because you get to see the scope of it. It's really cool. The Rolly Boy is really awesome. Uh, I like it a lot. Yeah, really? Yeah, what do you guys think? Do you guys disagree on this? I hate the thing whenever it rolls. We just roll through the rolls. Did you try that? J you just roll through the rolls. Yeah, just, just roll through it. And, and like, if it hits you, then just go back and heal. Yeah, it's really not that hard of a fight at all. Hard to disagree. It's such a bullshit hitbox. The rolls, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm thinking about it. I, I think that, uh, like, I, I, I don't know. Like, I'm trying to really decide and, and think about this. Like, I have no idea. Like, uh, mid B, I think, yeah, I think this is a fair ranking of the Godskin Noble. Uh, I like it more than the Apostle fight. I find it more interesting. I think the Godskin Apostle fight has, like, two really cool abilities, but other than that, it's super boring. The Godskin Noble, I feel, is much more interesting, and it does more dynamic things in the in the fight. So that's why I would say it's, it's better. So let's go over here. We're going to look at this. The next one. Godfrey, the first Elden Lord, and Horalu. I think you know it. I know it. Everybody knows it. This is an S tier fight. Is it better than Riker? Probably. 
I, I would say it is probably a cooler fight than Rikard, but I think that they're about even. Like, Godfrey, I, I feel like, so this is where I'm at, right? Rikard is a cooler fight thematically and cinematically, because it's just so fucking cool in Phase 2, right? But Godfrey is a harder and better designed fight. So it's like, which one really matters more to you? Is the, uh, the cinematic nature of the fight, or is the, uh, you know, the, the difficulty or, like, quality of the fight better? I, I don't really know which one. And, uh, Godfrey is very fair. Um, Godfrey is very fair. Yeah, pretty much. Sure. Yeah, okay. I, I, I'll, I'll go with that. Alright, next one. Crucible Knight and Misbegotten Warrior. I actually never did this fight. I, I never did both of these. In my opinion, I think both of these mobs, the Crucible Knight and the Misbegotten Warriors, are... There are a lot of fights in Elven Ring that are hard because there's two of them. And in my opinion, that is Dark Souls 2 difficulty, and I think it's garbage. However, I would say individually, the Crucible Knight by itself, I don't think we really have that on the list, do we? No, we don't. If it was just the Crucible Knight by itself, I think the Crucible Knight fight is an S-tier fight. Straight up, it is an S-tier fight. And I also think the Misbegotten Warrior fight is, a, is an S-tier fight as well. I think it's perfect. It is an absolutely perfect fight. It is completely fair. It is incredibly well designed. And it is just so, so good. So yeah, I would, I would say it. But like, it, both of them put together, I'm going to give this an E tier. Because I hate fighting two bosses at the same time. And I think that there are some levels of difficulty in Elden Ring that are created by putting you in a tight space and then making you fight multiple mobs. I find that very claustrophobic and I don't enjoy it. So I think this is, again, this is a personal preference for me, but that's the way that I feel about it. So let's look at the next one. Margit the Fell Omen. So for boss mechanics, I think Margit is an incredibly good fight. A good fight. However, I think that he, I've said this many times, I think that he is way too hard for a, for a, for a level one boss. Like he is just way too fucking hard. And I wish that they made Godfrey or somebody else the boss that was at the beginning. He is a filter boss? Yeah. I think he's an S- he's, he's an S-tier fight if you take that out of the equation. Like, if Margit was a mid-tier boss, like, halfway through the game, like Morgoth is, and it's the same person, I'm pretty sure. But either way, um, I would definitely say if that was the case, I would rank him as an S. But I think Margit, where he is in the game, is probably about right here. Yeah, I don't think he's as cool as Godric, and I also feel like he's the reason why a lot of people give up on the game, because of how punishing and hard he is that early on in the game. So, all things considered, I would say Margit is a great fight. However, I think that he's an A-tier fight. You see what I'm saying? I two-shot the guy, it was kind of easy. Yeah, I one-shot him whenever I did it when the game came out. I one-shot the bitch. It wasn't hard. You know why? It's because the boss, is, it, it's like I had the gear. But a lot of people don't know that. That's what it is. What Dum Dum made this? Morgoth and Margot are the same fucking character? It's a, yeah, but it's a different fucking fight. That's the difference. Uh, let's see here. And Star Surge Radon. Star Scourge Radon. Now, I think you know it. I know it. Everybody knows it. This is probably... Radon might be the best fight in all of Elden Ring. I I'm really gonna have to think about it for a bit. But I, I feel like he might be the best fight in all of Elden Ring. Like, it, it's so cool. Like, leading up to him is so cool. Like, everything about it is so fucking cool. Absolutely. They nerfed him. It doesn't really matter. Because, like, the thing is that for an average player, they're still going to have the experience that we did fighting him. Because they're not as good. They haven't played the game as much. And so I think it's fine. They buffed him again. Yeah, I'm sure that, you know, they'll tune it a little bit more back and forth, right? But I think Radon is incredibly well designed. Uh, he's really, really cool. Uh, the, 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 cinemat the, the cinematic around him is cool. Basically, everything about Radon is badass. And he's also like, he's like the big bad motherfucker that you see on the cover of the game. And you see him and you're like, fuck you, I'm gonna kill you. And that also matters too. So yeah, I'm gonna put Radon as an S tier fight. Now, Lich Dragon, uh, Fortisex. Now, this is the guy that you fight after you do, like, the Fia questline or something like this. Um, in my opinion, I think this is a fight that is an A tier. I think this is an A tier fight. 
Uh, I was very overleveled for this fight. However, I think cinematically, this fight is just... It, it, it's, it's fucking amazing. Like, that's all it comes down to. The fight is just simply fucking amazing. I love it. Yeah, it's a S music, A fight. Yeah, a, a hundred fucking percent, man. Yeah, I love the Lich Dragon fight. It's it's one of the best. You overleveled the entire game? No, I, I really don't think so. Like, I never... How could I have overleveled the whole game if I never farmed souls? So what you're telling me is, like, just by playing the game naturally, you're going to overlevel it? Oh, get the fuck out of here. Get the fuck out of here. Yes, you did. No, I didn't. No, I didn't. Not at all. And, uh, yeah, it was... Listen, I think people got mad because I'm, I'm good at building the character. I built a really good character, and it worked really well. I was like, hey, I'm going to put all my points into this one thing, and I'm going to beat the whole game with it. And you know what? I did. And it worked great. There's just people that are mad about it. I put 99 strength into my fucking character, and people are talking about overleveled, as if I didn't waste half of those stats. Come on. Let's see here. Dragon Lord Plasudiex. This fight reminded me of, um, it reminded me of King Ghidorah in, uh, in Godzilla. It was, uh, it was, like, it was thematic. It had cool abilities. It had the beams from Madeir. I thought the beams from Madeir were just fucking amazing. I love that. So I would say that, I would say Dragon Lord Plasudiax is an S tier fight. Um, I would put him below Rikard because I just think Rikard is just way cooler. I feel like both of the bosses, like, Plesudiax was not really a very hard boss to do, but he looked really, really cool. So I would say Rikard in general is, like, more thematic and more interesting and cooler, but Plesudiax is also great, too. That's where I would say. And now we're going to look at Morgoth the Omen King. Now, I think this is an A or an S tier fight. I do. It's an A tier. You guys are feeling A tier. I'm feeling it's an A tier, but it's above Godric. Because I think Morgoth the Omen King is a is a very, very good fight. He's got some badass abilities. He can do some really cool stuff. Uh, I think that Morgoth is a solid, very, very high A tier. I don't think he really goes into S tier, right? Whenever you put like Radon, Godfrey, Plasudiax up on S tier, do you really think that Morgoth deserves the same treatment? I don't think so. However, I do think that he's still really, really good. Okay? Yeah, he's, he's like, he just doesn't, like, he doesn't hit that, that ceiling that the other ones do. So let's look at the next boss Moog, Lord of Blood. Now, this boss was one of my biggest challenges whenever I was fighting him. He is incredibly hard. Uh, I feel like I'm like I don't know if I feel like Moog is a is a is a fun fight or not, because I didn't really like how a lot of his abilities were only hard because of the way that he delayed his attacks. I, I never felt like I was losing to Moog. I always felt like I was losing to myself, and I felt like it was kind of a. It was like a gimmick in a way of like why the fight was hard. In general, the fight does look really, really cool. The Neil thing is like probably the most, it's like one of the most iconic things in Elden Ring. All things considered, is Moog an S tier fight? Yeah, I think so. Uh, I, I think he is. I think he's an S tier fight. Uh, there are some things that I don't really like about him, but I do think he's an S tier fight. Absolutely. And uh, it's hard until you find out about the flask. Yeah, but there's a lot of bosses that are that way. Like most bosses in Elden Ring, there is a way that you can cheese them and just completely invalidate everything that they're doing. That's just the way the game goes. Let's look at the next boss. Malakath the Black Blade. I also think that Malakath is an S tier fight. The reason why I think he's an S tier fight is I like the transformation whenever you fight him. I like the lore behind the boss. I like the way that he moves around and jumps with like the sword. I feel like his sword attacks are extremely fair and well designed. I just feel like this boss is really good. The only thing that I would say is like makes him not like super good is the fact that the pillars in the room make the fight extremely easy. And if the fight had no pillars, if the room had no pillars, I think it would be a better fight. Or if he could destroy the pillars. 
Yeah, uh, health is so is low too. Yeah, and that's what happens with a lot of these characters is that they um they're not that hard because you encounter them way later on in the game. So he can uh he uses the pillars though. Yeah, I mean he does, but I just I, I it's just like my opinion. I feel like it makes it too easy because you can uh yeah it, to jump around. I, I yeah that that's how I see it. And I would put Malakath as an S tier fight. I would put him right here below Rikard. I don't think he's in like this level, but I think he's better than Plasudiax and Moog. Because I just enjoy the fight more. I think it's better. Uh, that's it. Like, what do you guys think about that? Yeah, now nah, he's harder than, he's better than Rikard. Uh, Malakath is better than Rikard. Um... I, I think this is just fair. Like, I mean, it's probably personal preference because the lore of Rikard and Malakath and, like, the cinema... Like, I, it, it's about the same. Like, I would really say it's about the same. It's personal preference at that point. Next one. Fia's Simps. So, um... To be honest, whenever I fought this boss, I had really good gear. And because of that, I completely destroyed it. A lot of you guys seem to be thinking the same thing. I think it's a D tier fight. It's the same as the Mimic tier. Fights being super fucking hard does not necessarily mean that they are good or bad, but I think if a fight is so easy, it's like Pinwheel, for example. If a fight is so easy that it's just like not really challenging, like who gives a shit about it? You know what I mean? Yeah, even with proper gear, it still sucks. And yeah, the only way it can be difficult is the fact that you have to fight three NPCs at the same time. And again, I feel like Dark Souls never really does well with multiple uh, multiple target combat. I think that Dark Souls is at its best, and like all the From Software games are at their best whenever you're fighting one big NPC at the same time. Or one guy, it's just you and him, and that's it. So let's look at the next boss. Radagon of the Golden Order and the Elden Beast. Um, okay, let me think about this. <sighs> mm. I'm just trying to, I, it's an S tier fight, but I'm, I'm just deciding where it is in, in the, in the S tier. Uh. Mm, man, this is a really hard decision. I think that it's either right here or right here. I, I, I don't know which one. To be honest with you, I, I, I don't know which one. I don't know if it's better than Godfrey or worse than Godfrey. I think that it's somewhere around here. Radagon's S, Elden Beast is C. No, I think Elden Beast is a fight that's very easy. However, it is also very cool, and everything about the fight is awesome. So it's like, it, I, I don't think it's a C fight in any regard. Yeah, a lot of people, again, I think are rating Elden Beast based off of its difficulty and not based off of its quality. And I think that's what happens a lot with these games. So I do think it's an S tier fight, all things considered. And for an end, uh, for like a From Software end boss, I think it's great. Yeah, it, it's it's great. So, Godskin Duo. Now, I one-shot this boss after people constantly told me that it was extremely hard to do. I feel like this is a boss that is only hard because there's two of them. And it is like, yeah, I, I, I had really good gear. I beat the boss very fast. I don't think it's super hard. I'm going to put the Godskin duo about right here. I think it maybe it's better than Commander Niall. I don't even think it's a B tier fight. I think the Godskin duo is a C tier fight. Because at this point, you've already seen this fight three or four times. Like, you've already fought the Godskin, the Fat Boy, like, twice, probably, with, like, the guy on the bridge, and then whenever you fight him in the church, you fought the Godskin Noble a couple of times as well. It's like, it, yeah, it's a discount, yeah, that's a really good way to say it. It's a discount orange scene and smoke. That's exactly where we're at. All right, next one. Uh, Moenia, Blade of Mikella. Mikella. Um... I don't think it's an S tier fight. I actually do not think it's an S tier fight. And I think if it is an S tier fight, it is at the very bottom of the S tier. I think that the reason why this fight is so hard is because of one mechanic that is incredibly hard to avoid. I feel like it's a gimmick fight. If, Mo if Moenia did not have Waterfowl, most people would kill the boss within 10 attempts. 
I, I, I don't think that's super cool. It's not, like, super exciting. Yeah, it's just... Uh, the fight's stressful. Like, the phase two is really, really cool, but I just don't like how the entire fight and the difficulty and everything about it is built around one singular mechanic that requires, like, pixel-perfect dodging. I think that sucks. I, I do. I, I, I think that sucks. It's a, fr it's a frustrating fight to progress on to do that, and... Other than that, I would say the fight is amazing, and I think Phase 2 is really fucking cool. But overall, I would say Melania is right here. It's an A-tier fight, because I just think that it's weird and it's gimmicky to have the entire fight built around one mechanic. That's basically it. Ozymandias, thanks for five of the subs. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. And uh, Mac is back. I beat the boss! You can block all our waterfall attack. You, a waterfowl attack? Yes, you can, but she heals herself, even if you have a- And that's another stupid thing, is that Moenia heals herself even whenever you block her attack with a 100% physical absorption shield. That's stupid as fuck. That's so fucking dumb, man. Uh, again, I think a lot of people- A lot of people think this boss is really good because it's probably the hardest boss in the game. I don't think that really necessarily makes it good. I think it's hard for the wrong reasons. Uh, that's it. You want to dodge mechanic? Yeah, Laura. Shields are stupid in this game? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just don't think it's that great of a fight. Again, anything where the entire fight is built around one mechanic, I think is mediocre. That's all it comes down to. Let's see here. But it is a really, really cool boss. Like, and the only thing that's keeping it, like, I feel like if it didn't have that mechanic and it was a little bit different, uh, it would easily be an S tier fight. And I do feel like for a lot of people, it would be an S tier fight. But especially for me and the way that I look at it, I find it very frustrating. Let's see here. Regal Ancestor Spirit. This is one of the fights that is extremely fucking easy. It is an extremely fucking easy fight. However, I think it's a good fight. I, I would put, like, in terms of lore and everything like that, I would say the Regal Ancestral Spirit is somewhere in, like, a B category. That's about it. I, I don't think it's great, it's not amazing or anything like that, but it's okay. You guys see what I'm saying? Like, yeah, above the Red Wolf? Uh, no, I think the Red Wolf is a better fight. In general, I like the Red Wolf a lot more. Move my cam. Okay, I'll move it down a little bit more now, okay? Alright, yeah, I think this should be... Yeah, that's good enough for now. Okay. Uh, cause yeah, now you guys can see the whole thing. Alright, the next boss right here that we're gonna be looking at is Magma Worm Makar. Now, I think the Magma Worms have the same general problem that a lot of the other fights have, like kind of the Fire Giant, is that getting behind the boss is just so good. And it's really weird for me to see the difficulty with these fights happen, because I feel like From Software already solved the problem of fighting large bosses and people hitting their feet the whole time and not being able to absorb the scenery. It's kind of like the ancient dragon god or whatever the fuck it is in Dark Souls 2 whenever you go up to like that big open area where like the actual fight itself, you don't even spend, like, you don't even look at his head. You never even see his head. You're just attacking his feet and then running away from the fire. It's super boring. So with the magma worms, I think generally the same thing happens where you never want to fight them in front and you're constantly just like basically rolling based off of like visual cues from like sound effects and stuff like that. And I don't think it's really that great. I think they already, from software, already created a perfect way to solve this problem, and they did it with Madeir. Madeir is the perfect solution. The way it moves, the way it punishes getting underneath it, how little damage it takes besides its head, and also how rewarding it is hitting its head. I think that uh, mag the magma worms should just learn a little bit more from that. Madeir is perfect. Yeah, I hear water. Yeah, it's the uh, it's this thing here. Let me just go ahead and get rid of this real quick. I'm gonna change something else. Okay, this should be better. I would say the magma worm is like a C tier fight. Uh, maybe a little bit better than Valiant Gargoyles, but overall, I'm you know I'm I'm not like that that excited about. It. But yeah, somewhere around there. Uh, now next, let's look at this one here. Uh, this is the werewolf guy. We fought him. He's right outside of the uh, the castle. Uh, the Misbegotten, and then you fight them later on as normal mobs in the, uh, in the Hail Tree. I think this is a great fight. You said it's an S-tier fight? I do think it's an S-tier fight. 
it's hard for me really like the design of the fight i think is s tier it is perfect for a mid mid level boss i feel like there needs to be like two different tier sets or tier lists there needs to be like the tier list for bosses that are um like there needs to be a tier list for bosses or like big cinematic event bosses in like the story of the game and a tier list for bosses that are like mini bosses because for the for a mini boss i would say the misbegotten is easily a fucking s tier boss easily an s tier boss however like uh, compared to a lot of these other harder bosses i would put the misbegotten i would put it right here uh, i think at the point in time where you fight it in the game I feel like it's an A-tier fight somewhere around here. What do you guys think? Uh, I rank him in a D. It's just, it's so hard to rank this. Like, I, I just, I don't know how to make the, uh, how to make the right decision. Like, what do you guys think? Yeah, what do you guys think? Where do you guys think you should be? Because I'm actually kind of curious about this. It's B. Okay, sure. I can put it in B. But I think it's better than the Godskin mobs for sure. It is 100% better. All right, Flying dra uh, Dragon Egg Heal. I feel like this fight is one of the coolest fights. It's very, very early in the game. This is the first time. It, like, it basically teaches you, like, yes, you have to use your fucking horse. You're going to do that to get around. It's just this fight is fucking amazing. And it's, like, it's badass because it happens so early in the game. It's a fight that you would expect to see, like, way later on in a game, and it happens so early, and I think that's why it's so good. Yeah, it's so fucking badass, man. And uh, the way it introduced is nuts. Exactly, and it's amazing. That's why I feel like he's an A-tier fight. The next one. Sir Gideon Offnir, the All-Knowing. Now, um, I hate this fucking boss. This boss is such a dick sucker. And for anybody who doesn't know, he only uses the abilities of the bosses that you've killed in that playthrough on his weapon set, on his attack set. So I actually think that he's very well designed, and I would put the boss as... I would say he's about right here. I would say Sir Gideon is right there. I've, I've got to take a piss, guys. I'll be right back, okay? Yeah, he's right there. He stomped me. I know. He completely destroyed me until I learned that all I need to do is attack and then I'll win. Uh, Astiel, natural born of the void. I feel like this, this fight is so fucking badass. This is such a badass, cool fight. I think it's an A-tier fight. I would say it's right here. I would put Astiel right here as an A-tier fight. Uh, he's very, very easy. But I, I think that this is this is where it is, right? Yeah, it's fair. He's an A-tier fight. Uh, he has a couple, like, the grab that he does, I think, is, like, really bullshit, personally. But overall, I think he's really, really cool. He's got great mechanics, everything about him. S-Steel number two is even doper. No. The fight itself is so bad. I mean, yeah, kind of. I don't know. Where would I put Tree Sentinel? I'd put Tree Sentinel as an A-tier fight. Yeah, I would say that. And, uh, where the bird at? There ain't no bird, man. What do you mean bird? Like, there's no bird. All right, next one. Dragon Kin Soldier. I feel like these, these bosses are just so... Like, they're so explosive. Like, they'll go and they'll just, like, do nothing. And then they'll just, like, randomly one-shot you. I don't really like that a lot. And I would say the Dragon Kin Soldier is, like, right here. I, I don't like fighting them. I think they're annoying. So, yeah, I'd say it's a C-tier fight. It's not that great. Now, the last one we want to look at is the Falling Star Beast. You fight him on the way over to Volcano Manor, if I remember right. And to be honest with you... Let me think. Let me think of all his mechanics. A tier. It's an A tier fight. It's a, it is the lowest A tier fight, but it is an A tier fight. I think it is incredibly well designed. Like, yeah, it's an A tier fight. Absolutely. Go take, yeah, it, it's... What, what, why? Okay, why, why is it not an A-tier fight? Please explain to me why, why is it not an A-tier fight? Yeah, it's the hardest boss in the game? No, it's not. Like, it, it's the hill? No, because you fight him again. Like, it's, it's just not. It's annoying as fuck. It's fucking boring. It's a repeated boss because it's cooler than Fire Giant. Why is Ronaldo lower? That's the thing, right? Is like, 
Renala and Fire Giant are like they're they're like really important like uh, cinematic bosses in the story versus the other ones like aren't really that big of a deal. So it's very hard for me to say like which one is actually better or not. But I think that he's either just sounds stupid, but I think that he's either right here or right here. Like I, I feel like one or the other. Uh, and it's not like it's like right right below or above Renala like one of these like it's hard really for me to say But that's about where I would go So let's see here uh, during the fight you said shit design now you said it's cool Well, yeah, because I got more experience with the fight and also I thought the reason why it was a shit fight is because the first time I fought him was in a very enclosed area where a lot of his attacks covered the entire arena and it made it less fun but whenever I had a chance to actually fight him out in the open, it was a much more enjoyable fight because it didn't feel claustrophobic and I could actually make my distance and like understand what's going on. Right? So that's why that's why I didn't like it at first and I liked it better afterwards. So uh, yeah, this is, in my opinion, this is the definitive Elden Ring boss tier list. I know obviously some of the mini bosses were not included, but I would say this is what I think is... Like, can we agree that this is a good tier list? Like, where do you guys think that there is nothing... Your contract just said three weeks ago? Yeah, again. Like, I... <laughs> uh, again, people that try to do this. Uh, it's crazy. And, uh, Apostle's higher just for the music? I don't really think so. And I think this, uh, wrong on Rikert and Melania. I know a lot of people think Melania is a great fight. I think it sucks. I, I don't think it's that great. I think it's a gimmick fight. And as soon as you understand that one gimmick, you will beat the fight probably within 10 attempts. If they took that gimmick out of the fight, most people would beat the fight within 10 attempts. It would beat the fight faster than Radon. That's why I think it sucks. I, I don't think it's an S tier fight. Rikert is a gimmick? Yeah, but Rikert is just... I, I think Rikert is way cooler than Melania. Straight up. I, I think Rikert is fucking awesome. And Melania is not as cool as Rikert is. Straight up. That's what I think. And uh, I hated Rikard, worst fight ever for Dawn for me. A melee dex user? Yeah, I would have picked up the spear then. And uh, I beat her easier after I found a way to counter her AoE. Exactly. And uh, where do I rank the blue skeleton? Wait, blue skeleton? I don't even know what the hell you're talking about. Yeah. Gideon should not be above Red Wolf. Um, Gideon above Red Wolf. Where the fuck is Gideon? Uh, I'm trying to remember where I put him. Uh, where is this? Oh, right here above the Red Wolf. No, I think Gideon's better. Yeah, I think Gideon is is much better. If anything, Gideon is too low. Like, I would maybe even move Gideon up a couple of uh, of steps, too. Yeah, where's Gravity? Oh, that's a that's S++++, plus plus plus, okay? Why is Loretta E tier? Because it's a reused boss that's boring. That's why. It's a reused boss that you've already encountered three different ways. It's reskinned. It's like the third horseback monster that you fight that uses the same exact moveset as the Tree Knight and the Draconic Tree Sentinel. Like, I don't really give a shit. Yeah, that's why. Put the bird on S tier since it kicked your ass so much. I hate the bird. I actually think the bird is very, very badly designed. And it's the same. I felt the same way about the bird as I felt about the uh, Amygdala, whatever, uh, in in Bloodborne. The fight was hard because of the way that, like, the camera is and because of the way the boss moves. And it wasn't really very fun to progress on it. Uh, that's basically, I thought the bird was fine. Yeah, and I think based off of your build, you'll probably think that or not. It's the same as, like, people are ranking Renala either S tier or D tier or E tier because some of them played Magic and they probably had a really bad time with the build and some didn't and they beat her very quickly. Uh, I think it's somewhere around in the middle and that's what I think is fair. Yeah, Black Bite Kindred, uh, I think that's just, again, it's like a B or C tier fight, somewhere around there. Dragons had the same camera problems? Um, I don't really think so because they're much slower. So it wasn't as punishing whenever things went wrong. And they also didn't move around as erratically as the bird or the amygdala does. Hmm. As Moina, it's the most memorable boss. Uh, I think Radon is the most memorable boss. Like, I think of all the bosses, Radon, the last boss, Godfrey, Rikard, Malaketh, uh, Malaketh Dragon Ward. I think these ones right here, if anything, Moog would be A tier as well. Because I feel like these fights on the top, and also Moog to a lesser extent, especially like with all the memes and everything people have about him, like these are, in my opinion, the most solid S tier fights, and Moog is maybe a little bit below that. Yeah, Radon, Godfrey, and Radagon, and Rikard, especially these three, 
are just fucking insane, and those are the best ones. Does that make sense? Malakath was the most memorable? I thought Malakath was awesome, yeah. Where that not that bad of a fight? It's definitely not worse than Fia's Champion or Mimic? Uh, I think it is. Um, I think because at least Fia's Champion and Mimic are different fights. Loretta, you already f you already fought Loretta three times at this point in the game. Like, I'm not going to rank a reskin that highly. I'm sorry. It's just not going to happen. Like, I'm sorry to say, yeah, that it's literally that simple. So, there we go. That is the definitive Elden Ring boss tier list. You know it. I know it. Everybody knows it. Yeah, that's it. Where was trash at that point in the game? It wasn't even reused. Bro. <sighs> it was reused. It was reused. Like, how do you f how do you think that I dodged every attack on the first time that I fought her? It's because they were the same attacks. It was the same ones, guys. Cheese most bosses of being OP and missed half of the boss's moveset? Oh, no, I, I didn't miss a lot of the movesets. I, I know what a lot of the bosses do. Uh, it's it, The thing is, cheesing bosses by being overleveled that's it's not even about being over -leveled. it's about making a good build there's a lot of people who think that if you if you're good at making a good character in, in elden ring you're somehow cheating or cheesing the game that's not how it works guys that's not how it works at all like i i build a character and i like well, my intention is to make the character good that's what i want i want to make my character strong and powerful and good absolutely everyone wants dumb doesn't yeah there there it is like uh let's see here uh real and true Asma OP? I know, man. I know, I know, I know. Give me one second. Let me look back over here. And uh, several bosses run a horse, but they were different bosses, different mechanics and designs. End of story. All right. I'm going to fully address this. So, basically, you have the three different horseback mon uh, the horseback bosses. You have the Tree Sentinel, you have the Draconic Tree Sentinel, and you have Loretta. Now, the Tree Sentinel has basically the exact same Halibird moveset as the Draconic Tree Sentinel, minus, I think, one attack with its shield. And the Draconic Tree Sentinel has about the same exact moveset as Loretta, besides, and this is just with the polearm, by the way, Knight Cavalry 2. Knight Cavalry is slightly different, but yes. Um, and Loretta has, again, the same general moveset with their polearm. So all three of these, these bosses,